You're listening to Let's Talk Creation, the science podcast that's just for you. Where where are we putting dinosaurs in creation? Hmm. And how does that work? So I On guess, the land. <laughs> I guess I guess there's a couple museum. of things. Except, spinos- there's... except spinosaurs, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> there's a couple of questions here. One would be timing, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, when did they live and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, because as creationists, we have a much shorter understanding of Earth history than... 65 million years ago and when dinosaurs ruled the earth or whatever. Um, I guess there's the question of what are they in terms of say created kinds? If we don't believe their evolutionary whatever's or proof of evolution or whatever, uh, there's that question. And then I suppose what happened to them? Uh, if it's not an asteroid zapping them in the Yucatan and wiping out all of the dinosaurs, then, uh, where are they going? Where did they, where did they go? So I guess where did they come from? When did they arrive? And and where did they go? Those are my those are my questions. So what do sure. you got for me? Anybody have any ideas? <laughs> Not Joe. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking too. <laughs> where did they come from? Where did they go? <laughs> well, in terms of the t- the time frame for that, you know it. It is important to distinguish that we hold to a young earth creation model, um, you know, here on this podcast and and in this group. And so we, we, while we can accept certain aspects of uh, what we see in the Jurassic Park films, we reject other aspects. We reject the time frame. We reject the notion of naturalism, um, that only naturalistic evolution is responsible for the diversity of life that we see. And, you know, we would frame that around the context of the biblical time frame that is given to us in in Genesis. And so we're told um, the events of creation took place in six what appear to be rotational literal days. And that a couple, you know, 1600 or so years later, approximately, we have a flood. Uh, and that that flood took about a year, covered the entire planet, um, and would likely have left a significant mark in the geologic record. And so in terms of when dinosaurs were alive, um, they would have been land dwelling creatures created on day six. Um, although I guess we could maybe quibble about Spinosaurus or some of these sort of aquatically uh, derived creatures. Um, I, it, and, and I do like to double down on the notion of flying dinosaurs and swimming dinosaurs, not being real categories. Um, as, as fun okay. as it is to, to mess with my, my, my friends on this, it's uh, you know, that that's inaccurate. So most of are not swimming dinosaurs. Um, they would have been day five creatures. Uh, so the dinosaurs, yeah, day six, and then because we find them in flood sediments, the Mesozoic rock layers um, are part of the geologic uh, column associated with the geologic time scale. We can accept and study and understand the column without conceding the time scale. And that's what creation geologists have done uh, for, for decades now, at least, and, and, and longer. And so what we're able to look at is the Mesozoic rocks and the layering and the order of those layers is significant and is something that is, is helpful to study, even the Jurassic, if you will. Um, and so, yeah, basically we only see them in what are most likely flood sediments, meaning that they would have lived up until the point of the flood, Presumably, some of them would have been taken aboard the ark, uh, based on the description that we see in Genesis, uh, in Genesis six of the creatures that were brought aboard the ark, and then they would have uh, walked off the ark on a very different planet, uh, a, a lost world, if you will, uh, or a or a fallen kingdom. Um, depends on how you how you wanted <laughs> to describe it. There. <laughs> so, so you have dinosaurs living with people. I have to ask because I'm sure some of our skeptical. Uh, listeners might be wondering do you think that the flintstones is a documentary <laughs> goodness i hope so uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right well that's good to know um that's what matt, i got <laughs> i don't have a more sophisticated answer than that I don't either. <laughs> it's it's a it's you know obviously people are asking that to make fun of us but then at the same time i'm like well i, I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't obviously not, but at the same time, huh? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. So, scripted, Matt, animated, you, inspired by real events, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there, that's, that's good. <laughs> Matt, you've written about 
created kinds and dinosaurs. I know you've been working on this. This is something that you've been very, very interested in for a very long time. Can you, I mean, are, are we talking about massive evolution of dinosaurs? Are we talking about a limited number of created versions of dinosaurs? Are pterosaurs dinosaurs? I guess there are no flying dinosaurs. There are no swimming dinosaurs. Well, see, that's where I have to disagree with David. Because if we're counting these feathered dinosaurs as oh, dinosaurs, oh. there would be some flying uh, dinosaurs. Fair so Uh-oh. I should qualify. I mean, pterosaurs are not flying dinosaurs. Pterosaurs my, are not flying dinosaurs. My we'll apologies, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. You All were right. when I went to school. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, this is um, the the kind of the the biggest work that's been done on this was done for the ICC. It was Neil Doran was leading that with his students, and I jumped in on it because um, I think he got tired of me, like, nitpicking and commenting, and so he's like, just get on the paper. Um, <laughs> and so... Um, you know, we, we looked at as many different groups of dinosaurs as we could. I think the, the most important thing to communicate to people right away is a dinosaur is not a type of animal in the way of like a dog or a cat. Like it's a big category of animals. It's like saying, you know, mammal or something like that, where you've got lots and lots of what we would expect to be different created kinds. And it makes sense if you think about it, right? Like, you know, you look at like a Brachiosaurus and a Stegosaurus and a T-Rex, those don't really have a lot in common. You know, like I wouldn't look at each one of those and be like, oh, no, those are probably like, you know, brothers and sisters. Like, no, these are these are very different creatures. Um, and so, you know, what we came up with, you know, we we didn't look at every group. We got we got as, as comprehensive as we could find. We had a lot of trouble finding stuff on sauropods, oddly enough, um, which are the long neck dinosaurs. But um, we were saying, I think at minimum, there's probably at least 35 kinds of non-avian dinosaurs so non-bird dinosaurs wow. um probably more than that um and especially consider of course we don't have um you know uh fossils of every creature and we're still discovering new things all the time so you know yeah i, I think it's not it's not unreasonable at all to say you know it could be 35 to 75 different kinds of dinosaurs um, um somewhere in that kind of range and so that's a lot of animals um and yeah. you can um you can recognize some basic types, I think, pretty quickly, you know, like um, I, I was just at Target the other day and they had a bunch of the Jurassic World toys out there. So, of course, I stopped to look at it as I was walking by. Oh, look, there's a Therizinosaur. And um, it was funny. There's this mom with her kid there and she's like, they got every kind of dinosaur here. <laughs> that was, no, no, they do not. You know, um, oh, that's lady, like, if you only knew. Like, there's only like maybe like five, five kinds of dinosaurs or something like that. No, we're talking about, you know over 2000 species probably have named dinosaurs at least 1400 i mean there's a bunch out wow. there so this is a this is a huge group of creatures wow. um and so um you know when you look at something like a stegosaurus yeah you recognize the stegosaurus doesn't look like a triceratops or a t-rex but there's all these other species of animals that are like stegosaurus things like kentrosaurus and chiangosaurus and weirhosaurus like all these yeah. animals and so we can easily recognize all those as hey those those have the same body plan like those are all it's just this, you know, plant eating animal with these plates and spikes going on its back. Sometimes the spikes go up half the back. Sometimes it's all spikes. Sometimes they have giant so shoulder spikes or hip spikes. But like, other than that, it's the same kind of creature is the idea. And so, you know, doing the the statistical barominology, which you guys have talked about that before in the podcast, um, you know, we're, we've done that on those dinosaurs and, and been able to find most of them are the groups we recognize. They make sense um, what, what look like created kinds. So you just heard a clip from the Let's Talk Creation podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast or hear the full episode, check out corsi.org slash podcast or hit the notification bell, hit subscribe, hit like, and you will see our podcast episodes on your regular video feed. Thanks.